here, but it's going to be a little bit different. Okay. And then we'll give you a couple of problems to do over this great holiday weekend. That's not very nice, is it? Just a couple. Oh, we don't have a class Friday. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I'm thinking. I'm wanting it to be Friday already. Duh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm ready. I am ready. We can just skip Friday now. Actually, I'm ready for this semester to be over. It seems like June has been forever. <laughs> To me, June has taken forever. I'm sorry. So, anyhow, what they want to find... Whoop. Get back there. What they want us to do on this problem... Again, this is on page 165. It says you got a rectangular area with a semicircular uh, <coughs> portion removed as shown in that figure. Calculate the moment of inertia with respect to A, the XX centroidal axis, and they've labeled that right here, right? the centroidal axis right here, then uh, the YY centroidal axis, and they've got that label, and then the XX reference axis, which is down here at the bottom. <coughs> Calculate all three of those, okay? And we'll see what the difference is going to be. And it's going to be very similar to what we found out on that last one we did, the uh, XX and, and the reference. So, to do that, we have to do exactly what we did on that last one. And, and note, see here, they actually show you, there's that D1 value. And that's the difference between the uh, centroidal axis for this whole piece here and the centroidal axis for the composite, where you actually cut away part of it. Okay? So that's what we're looking at. So they, they do kind of illustrate that a little bit better here than what that last problem did. It's all labeled on here. So we would have to do exactly what we did before. We would have to find out what the area of one is and the area of two. We only have two components here, don't we? Um, it looks like one is going to be the big square and two is going to be that semicircular cutout. So the big square was 24 by uh, 16, and that value is 384 square inches. Then the uh, smaller one, now I've got that shown as the area is pi times the uh, diameter, right, which is 12 squared divided by uh, 8 and that area is negative right 56.55 square inches then we want y1 and y2 we won't be doing much with the x's on these we won't be doing a lot of y uh, about the y y axis so Y1 is going to be the height divided by 2, right? 16 divided by 2 is 8 inches. Um, <coughs> y2 is actually going to be, what, uh, 16 up, right? Minus, so you go 16 to get to the top, minus uh, 0.425 times 6 times a radius. That turns out to be 13.45. Uh, inches. Does that make sense? You're finding out what this point right here is, right? Y2 is this distance right here. To find out, this thing is turned upside down, right? But if you looked in the, in the uh, handouts, it was something like this, right? And you had this distance here was 0.425 times the radius. What's well, turned upside down, so that's this distance right here. So 16 minus that gives you this distance right here, right? That's where that came from. It's 
It's Meyer, doesn't it agree? 13.45, roughly. And you know what, this, there, now we're back. Okay, then what, uh, we also have to have, and let's see, let's do the D's here. D1, <coughs> excuse me, D2. We can't figure those yet though, can we? We have to have Y bar. So Y bar is gonna be the area of one, which was uh, 384 times the Y1, which was eight, plus the area of two. Oh, let's see, that's a minus, sorry. We have to subtract that, don't we? Minus 56.5655, excuse me, times 13.45 divided by 384 minus 56.55. Do the math on that. Y bar turns out to be 7.06 inches. So that's the center of gravity for the total, isn't it? This is CG total. This will be CG, uh, this is CG1. And this is CG2. So to get that, we take this, the, uh, you, you can just do this, 8 minus 7.06. And then it's 13.45 uh, minus 7.06, right? The difference between the two. And that should be 0 0.94. 6.31. No, 6 yep. I'm going to write it down here. 6.39 inches. Okay. Now we still have to have the moment of inertia for each of those two components. Okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we're subtracting it out. See what I'm doing is I made one this whole big square and then I took an A2, I'm subtracting that part of it out. So the area has to be a negative. Okay. Then the Y2 is we've got to find this center of gravity for this particular piece right here. Well, if you look in the, in the calculations, it says the distance from here to there is 0.425 times the radius. So to get that distance from all the way at the bottom up to here, we have to take 16 minus that value, and that gives you the 13.45. Okay, Mark. So do we not have to worry about that little circle to the left? What? Oh, this is just a. This is labeling that as a one, and this is area one and area two. Okay. <laughs> all right. So the uh, moment of inertia for the first piece was the base times the height cubed divided by 12, right? So that's 24 times 16 cubed divided by 12. And that should come out to be, how about 81.92 inches to the fourth. The moment of inertia for the second section. Now that one we would have to look that up in the uh, sheets that I gave you. And what you find out is that is 0.11 times the radius uh, cubed, or excuse me, to the fourth power. Okay. 0.11 times the radius to the fourth power. You punch that in, and make sure you know how to do that on your calculator, right? For the test, raise something to a different power. 
uh, you should end up with negative, right? 142.56 inches to the fourth. And again, it's negative because you're subtracting that out, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So then the moment of inertia for the whole thing about the centroidal axis, and that's what that x means. Actually, yeah, that's that's the x we want there. It's going to be that summation of the moment of inertia of this one plus the area times the distance squared plus or subtracting then the moment of inertia of this one times or uh, plus or minus the area times d squared. So it's going to be this 81 92 inches to the fourth plus the area of that which was 384 inches squared times this d value 0.94 inches and that value has to be squared and be careful with all your squares here too make sure you don't screw that up minus and I think it might I don't actually if you put plus here then you put in brackets minus 142.56 inches to the fourth minus 56.55 square inches times uh, 6.39 inches and that value has to be squared and then put close your brackets there right or close your parentheses punch all that in and you should end up with 6,079 I think they rounded off 0.7 inches to the fourth their rounding and my rounding is a little bit different uh, they end up with 6,080 something 82 yeah as you can see there we got the same numbers now that is the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis right here okay we're running out of time so we'll we'll pick up on that uh, next class I'm going to give you some problems to do but I haven't looked over them yet and it'll just be a couple between now and Friday and then we'll continue on with where we're at right now Okay, so we'll finish this up Friday. Uh, I'll ask you to find the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis, and we'll just go from there for these problems that we'll do on for homework. But I'll I'll go back to my office and look them over and figure out which ones, and I'll send you an announcement slash email. Okay. Uh huh. Your uh, your IO two there. Uh huh. What about it? That's where the, the semicircle is, and that's the cutout. Right. I understand why the area would be negative, but why is the uh, why is the moment of inertia? Let's look at it this way: you're subtracting strength, aren't you? You're you're removing an amount of material from that that makes it weaker, right? That makes it <coughs> less resistant to buckling. Okay. Does that make sense? As soon as you start cutting things out, you just reduce the moment of inertia of the overall thing. So it would have to be a negative value. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because you're, you're reducing the strength is essentially what you're doing. So anytime you have a void in there, you have to subtract it. Just like with your area. Yep. Hey, we'll see you uh, Friday. You just got posting uh